Mr. and Mrs. Brown first met Paddington on a railway station, which was how he came to have such an unusual name for a bear. They were waiting for their daughter Judy when Mr. Brown caught sight of him, sitting on an old suitcase behind a pile of mailbags. As they drew near, he stood up and politely raised his hat. Good afternoon, he said. Can I help you? Well, no, said Mr. Brown. We were wondering if we could help you. You are a very small bear, said Mrs. Brown. Where are you from? Darkest Peru, said the bear. I'm not really supposed to be here at all. I'm a stowaway. I came all the way in a lifeboat, and I ate marmalade. Bears like marmalade. I used to live with my Aunt Lucy, but she had to go into a home for retired bears, so I emigrated. Oh. Aunt Lucy always said she wanted me to emigrate when I was old enough, but now that I have, I'm not quite sure what to do next. As he bent down, the Browns caught sight of a label round his neck. It said, Please look after this bear, thank you. It was the kind of label you couldn't possibly ignore, and in no time at all, things began to happen. Mrs. Brown thought of a name for him. Paddington. And while she went off to look for Judy, Mr. Brown was put in charge of ordering some refreshments. Paddington. Paddington. Come along, Paddington, said Mr. Brown. I expect you're hungry after your long journey. I am, said Paddington. Very. Paddington had never been taken out to tea before, and he was very excited. I don't suppose there are many bears who've been inside a buffet, Mr. Brown, he exclaimed. Uh, no, said Mr. Brown. Mmm, mmm, mm, especially mm, one with buns. <laughs> I think perhaps I'd better sit down. Uh, yes, said Mr. Brown, trying hard to pretend that he had tea with a bear every day of his life. Hello, Mrs. Brown, called Paddington as he caught sight of the others. Don't go away, we're in here. Watch out, shouted Mr. Brown. But he was too late. Paddington was already up to his knees in trouble. Henry, cried Mrs. Brown, what are you doing? What am I doing? Look at him. He's all covered in jam and cream. I've never seen such a mess. I don't know what the manageress will say. Or the taxi driver, said Judy. Taxi driver? Judy's right, said Mrs. Brown. We can't leave him here, not in his present state. Don't worry, Mrs. Brown, called Paddington. I'll clear up the mess. Bears are good at clearing up messes. Number 32, Windsor Gardens, please, as quickly as you can. Not too quickly, called Mrs. Brown. We've two more to come. Is that one of them? asked the driver. He's covered in white stuff. It's only cream, said Judy. I dare say, said the driver. But bears is sixpence extra. Sticky bears is ninepence. Ninepence extra, exclaimed Paddington hotly. He directed a hard stare at the driver. He seemed to go a funny shade of pink. Gosh, said Judy, how did you learn to do that? My Aunt Lucy taught me, said Paddington. She said it might come in useful one day. Mary, said Mr. Brown, are you sure we're doing the right thing? That, said Mrs. Brown, remains to be seen. I've never had a bear about the house before, but I have a feeling things may never be quite the same again.